Can a linear transformation from 2D to 3D be onto? No. But why? It's because this linear transformation is determined by where it sends two basis vectors. And to see what this means, let's look at the points in 3D space that we assign 0, 1, and 1, 0, and then draw arrows to them. We can visualize adding two arrows by drawing the base of one at the tip of another. Then, it becomes abundantly clear what a linear combination of two arrows looks like. It's the point at the very top of the scaled green arrow here. Moreover, we see how the output of two highlighted basis vectors correspond to the entire transformation. And this is exactly what we mean when we write down the image of t is equal to the span of two outputs, i.e. the image of t is determined by the output of 1, 0, and 0, 1. And to deeply understand this question, we must understand what the span of two vectors in 3D can be. It can be a plane, as we've seen with our example when we assign the bases like this. It can be a line if, say, we assign both 1, 0, and 0, 1 to, I don't know, the same vector, then their span is really just a one-dimensional line. Or, in a special case, it could be a point if we assign both bases to 0. This means that the image of our transformation in 3D space can only be a plane, a line, or a point. And now none of these is equal to the entire 3D space. So we have proven that a transformation from 2D to 3D cannot be onto. The problem was we only had two vectors to assign when the output had three dimensions. If, say, we could assign a third basis vector, it would be quite easy for our transformation to be onto, because we could assign the three bases vectors of R3, and we could get an image that spans all 3D space. This is only possible though when we add another dimension to the input. So, for example, a linear transformation from R3 to R3 can be onto because then we would just have three assignments to make and that's enough vectors to span the entire output space. Essentially, if the number of bases in the output is greater than the number of bases in the input, we have no hope to fill our output when we apply our transformation. So we can answer questions like, can a linear transformation from R9 to R11 be onto? Or like, can a linear transformation from R2 to R999 be onto? And now you might be thinking, why does any of this matter? And you should! Linear transformations are used in computer science, machine learning, computational math, cryptography, and, and the input and output dimensions are in the thousands. Now, understanding the underlying concepts of linear transformations become extremely important when you can't visualize them so naturally in 2D and 3D space. For example, since a linear transformation is determined by these vectors, we often just write them together, call it a matrix, and teach in school how to compute a 2D input by multiplying by the matrix on the input. There is an incredible amount of research devoted to speeding up matrix computation because computing these transformations for large inputs can take a very long time. Now, we've seen that a linear transformation from 2D to 3D cannot be onto. The question I leave for you is, can a continuous function from 2D to 3D be onto?